This video gives a quick revision of core A-level trigonometry questions. Videos are aimed at students who are doing A-level courses, or essentially, if you're an international student, somebody who's working on maths and you're around the age of 17 to 18. And the intention is not so much to teach trigonometry, because it's assumed you've had many classes on that, but to demonstrate how you can solve typical problems that might come up in examinations. Now what we're going to do in this first video is briefly remind you of some key formula and facts that you'll be expected to use. So here we're actually going to focus first on topics that you might have covered at age 15 and 16 just to make sure you're confident in these before we carry on with this slightly more difficult problems. First then, we're going to assume that you're familiar with what we might call the Sokotoa rules. We'll assume you're confident in these because you've done them before. Now if you are, you can skip the next two slides and move on to the next point. So you'll see what I've done here is I've marked down a right angle triangle. And I've very clearly marked what I'm going to call the adjacent angle, adjacent to this angle theta, the hypotenuse side, and the opposite side. And this is where the Sokotoa rules come from. So what you'll notice is sine of the angle theta is given by the formula opposite over hypotenuse. So you take the length of the side that's opposite the angle and you divide it by the length of the hypotenuse. If you want cos theta, you take the length of the adjacent side and divide it by the hypotenuse. And if you want tan theta, you do opposite divided by adjacent. Now hopefully you're all familiar with these rules. Just a quick check then that you can do them. So here's a triangle and we've said find the angle theta and the length AB. And you'll see it's given you the length of this side down here is 2 and the length of this side here is 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that and say OK, they've given me the adjacent and they've given me the opposite. So which formula do I think I need if I've got adjacent and opposite? And hopefully it's obvious to you that what you need is the tangent. So what I'm going to write is tan theta equals 3 over 2. Alternatively, theta equals tan to the minus 1 of 3 over 2, which is a straightforward calculator problem, and you will get 56.3 degrees. Now the other part of the question is it said find the length AB. Now hopefully it's obvious to you that you can use Pythagoras for this. So I'm going to write AB squared equals 2 squared plus 3 squared. Alternatively AB equals the square root of 13. Now before I move on some of you may have noticed that this question has got a slightly confusing aspect. You're looking at this triangle and you're saying this side length is 2 and this side length is 3. So visually, what appears to be the longer side length has got a smaller value and the shorter side length has got a bigger value. So I'll write this in large. This is a warning for you. Too many students look at the picture supplied in an exam paper and assume that that picture is telling them relative lengths. But sometimes examiners will go out of their way to make the pictures less informative than you might think. So please don't just assume that because this side length looks longer that it is longer unless the examiner specifically says this is a scale diagram. Okay, next question then. Given the angle theta here shown is 30 degrees, so we're told that that's 30 degrees, and given that AB equals 2, and you'll see, so the hypotenuse is 2, find BC. Well, clearly, in this particular case, because we've got the hypotenuse and because we've got the angle theta and we're being asked to find what would be considered the opposite, then clearly the formula we need is the sine rule sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to write sine 
of 30 equals BC over 2 or BC equals 2 sine 30. Now you may not know this but sine 30 is actually a half so I get 2 times a half which is 1 so BC is 1. What other rules might you need to know? Well the sine rule and again we're going to assume in the future that you're confident with things like this and you'll notice for this rule I've given you an arbitrary triangle with corners ABC and angles little a little b little c. And what does the sine rule say? It says this, it says sine of A over the opposite side. So you'll see if I've taken the angle A here, then I associate that with the opposite side, which is BC. And then I've got this sine B over AC. So again, you look, I've got this angle B and I associate it with the opposite side. So sine B over AC, and then finally, of course, sine C over AB. So you take the angle C here, and you associate it with the opposite side, which here is AB. So that's the sine rule. Sine A over BC equals sine B over AC equals sine C over AB. What about the cosine rule? You'll see I've given a very similar triangle, and here... <laughs> The rule is based mainly on the side lengths. So what you'll see is I've got a b squared, and then the key thing is because this a b squared is on the left hand side, then the angle I'm going to be interested in is the opposite angle to a b. So if a b is along here, then actually the angle I'm interested in is the opposite one over here, which is the angle c. So you'll see I've got the cosine of c over here, and then the rest of the formula you basically have to remember how it works. So you take the other two sides, which are AC and CB. So you see I've got BC squared plus AC squared minus 2 times BC times AC times cos of the angle. So you see two sides come into this bit of the formula. And then the other side and the corresponding angle come into this bit of the the formula. Now you may have seen this formula written in slightly other ways but the key thing is to remember the relationship between the terms and the triangle. You can of course write this formula in other ways which is what I've done here. So in this particular case you'll see I've said BC squared on the left and what angle is associated with BC? Well it's the cosine of little a and then you'll see I've got the other two sides squared and minus two times the other two sides in this bit of the formula. So you can arrange the formula as you need. So then here's a question. Given that BC equals 4, so I'll write that down there, AC equals 5, I'll write that down there, and AB equals 6, I'll write down that on there, find this angle. Now clearly in this particular case you've been given three sides and you want to find an angle, so I must need the cosine rule. So which cosine rule am I going to use? Well, because I want A, then I start with a cosine rule, which has BC on the left-hand side. So you'll see I've got BC squared equals BA squared plus AC squared minus 2 times AB times AC times cos A. So now all I need to do is put in all the numbers. So BC squared, I've got 16 equals AB squared, which is 36, plus AC squared, which is 25, minus 2 times 6 times 5 times cos A. Now there's various ways of rearranging this. You can do it how you like, but I'm going to basically bring the cos A to the left. So I've got 30 cos A equals 36 plus 25 minus 16 or cos A equals 45 oh that shouldn't be 30 by the way that should be 2 times 30 get that right so I get 45 over 60 which is 0 0.75 and if you plug that in your calculator you'll find that A equals 41.4 degrees what about this one then? 
you'll see here I've been given BC equals 2, AC equals 4, and the angle A in here is 30 degrees. And what we've been able asked to find is this angle in here, B. Now you can see clearly I've got an angle and an opposite side, and I've got a side, and I want the opposite angle. So I must need to use the sine rule. So in this particular case, I'm going to use the sine rule, and you'll see I'm going to use this part, sine A over BC, and this part, sine B over AC. So if I write that out, you'll see I've got sine 30, that's sine A, divided by BC, which is 2, and I'm going to put that equal to sine B, B I don't know, divided by AC, which I do know, which is 4, and clearly I can rearrange all of this to write sine B equals 4 over 2 sine 30, and if you stick that in your calculator, you'll find this gives you 1, and therefore B must be equal to 90 degrees. So you'll actually find that this is a right angled triangle. And that's not obvious from the picture, and again, examiners may do that to you. They won't make the picture give away what the solution is, and you have to be confident in your own working. What about the area of a triangle? So the standard formula is given as half the product of two sides and the angle between them. So we'll illustrate that here. So for example, example you could do this side AC times this side BC multiplied by the sine of the angle between them and this extra half term. So that's how you have to understand it. Two sides and the angle between them. And you use this formula here to get the area. Now, of course, I can use other combinations. So for example, here, I've done this side AB. I've multiplied it by this side BC and the sine of the angle between them which here is B. And of course the last one which you could do is I could take AC and AB so I can do this side, this side and the sine of the angle between them again times a half. So depending on what information you've got you can use the appropriate formula. Now just a reminder of course the easiest formula of all for a triangle is half base times height, but that's often only easy to use if you have a right angle triangle. If you don't have a right angle triangle, you may not know the base, you may not know the height, but with a right angle triangle, that formula is usually the most straightforward. So here's a question then. Find the area of this triangle, and I've been given that BC equals 2, AC equals 4, and this angle here equals 70. So fairly clearly, I can substitute straight into this formula that the area is a half times AC times BC times sine C. So in other words, the area equals a half times 4 times 2 times the sine of 70. And if I plug that into my calculator, I'm going to get 3.76. I'm not going to worry about units here. So in summary, key formulas that you should be aware of. You should know your Sokotoa rules which work with right angle triangles. You should know your area rules. And you should know the sine rule and the cosine rule for non-right angle triangles. And what I'm going to say is before you begin a question on trigonometry, whatever question involves trigonometry, you need to be first of all confident in the basic formula for triangles involving side lengths, areas, angles, and so on, because these can come up as minor parts of many larger problems.